Disney's animated Lion King will always hold a special place in people's hearts, but the 2019 version takes the opportunity to correct some of the crazy plot holes, goofs and mistakes fans have spotted over the years in the original. Yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm explaining how the Lion King remake fixes many of those issues from the 90s classic. Some spoilers ahead, so take care if you haven't seen it yet. Don't forget my Lion King giveaway is still running, so be sure to subscribe and leave a comment about the movie for your chance to win. The animated Lion King's opening scene and Circle of Life song are iconic moments that the remake mostly reproduces shot for shot, however it also fixes a few crucial errors from the 1994 movie. Just before Simba's presentation, Rafiki anoints him, breaking open a fruit to release a red liquid, which he paints on the young cub's forehead before dusting his face to dry the mark. The fruit that Rafiki brings with him appears to come from the ancient baobab tree that he lives in, and the problem with the original scene is that a baobab fruit doesn't contain a red liquid and is actually dry inside, with white pulp and large seeds. In the new movie, the filmmakers have fixed this by having Rafiki use some red roots, which release a red dust when he breaks them. It's also this red powder that makes little Simba sneeze, rather than Rafiki dousing the poor little cub in a handful of dust as he did in the animation. The 2019 movie also changes the hand that Rafiki uses to anoint Simba from his left hand to his right. This is consistent with the fact that Rafiki is right-handed when he's fighting the hyenas with his stick later in both movies. Rafiki himself was misrepresented in the original movie as although he's modelled after a mandrill, in the film and the screenplay he's referred to as a baboon. Some of the Disney animators even thought of him as a mutated monkey, and gave him physical features such as a long tail, which is incorrect for a mandrill. It means you're a baboon, and I'm not. <laughs> I think you're a little confused. Wrong. That baboon reference has been eliminated from the new movie, and Rafiki's design has also been corrected by replacing the long tail he had in the animation with a short stub that's biologically accurate for his species. Another mistake corrected in the new Lion King is the colour of Simba's eyes. In reality, newborn lion cubs start life with blue-grey eyes. Then after two or three months, they turn an orangey-brown colour. The remake reflects this, as you can see young Simba has dark bluish eyes at the time of his presentation and once he's grown up a little, they're a darker yellowy-orange colour. In the animation, as a newborn cub, Simba simply has dark eyes, and when he's older his eyes are a brownie colour. And to make us connect with the characters and their feelings even more, the original animators gave the lions eyes that were very like humans. So they have a pupil, an iris, and a white of their eyes, which is sometimes coloured yellow, even though real-life lions don't have whites in their eyes. Scar's bright green eyes have also changed for a better sense of realism in the reboot. The original movie was also guilty of featuring numerous wild animals that aren't native to the film's African setting. For example, when Simba sings, I just can't wait to be king, various animals construct a crazy tower, and on the very top are a group of giant anteaters. Giant anteaters are only native to Central and South America, and so wouldn't be seen in the wild in Africa. So this time around, the filmmakers have made sure there's no giant anteaters in the movie. Other non-African animals that were also scrubbed from the latest film include the tail-hanging monkeys that make an appearance during I Just Can't Wait to Be King. And the gopher that pops up during Zazu's morning report also hit the cutting room floor in the remake for the same reason. Zazu. Uh, yes! Sir, nose from the underground. One mistake which has been left in the new version is the inclusion of leafcutter ants. These appear in the opening sequence in both movies, even though they are only native to the Americas. I think they kept these misplaced ants in the film for two reasons. First of all, the filmmakers wanted to keep the Circle of Life sequence more or less shot for shot. And secondly, the ants play a special part later in Rafiki discovering that Simba is still alive. The animated movie often emphasises how dim-witted the hyenas are. Zazu, you told me they're nothing but slobbering, mangy, stupid poachers. Ixnay on the Oopid's Day. Who you call it Oopid's Day? But this doesn't reflect the fact that in real life, hyenas are intelligent, skilled and dangerous predators. Which is why Shenzi, who's voiced by Black Panther's Florence Gasumba, is a lot more menacing in the new version. You're no match for Azarabi! You will die with your King Nala! And although the hyenas are still antagonists in the remake, the Nazi goose-stepping scene has been cut to fit the new film's more realistic and grounded approach. 
Hardcore Lion King fans may have noticed a small change in the new movie when Simba and Nala are reunited. Where have you been? <laughs> in the original film, as they rub their heads together, you can also hear them purring, much like a pet cat does. However, in the remake, Simba and Nala's purring has been removed, likely because animal experts believe that lions either don't purr at all, or the noises they make are technically different to the purr of a domestic cat. Following Simba and Nala's reunion is Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which the original filmmakers described as perhaps the most steamy love scene in any Disney film. During the song, Nala gives Simba what the filmmakers have called a come hither look. In the new film, however, that moment is replaced with Nala giving Simba an affectionate lick, which fits with the remake's much more realistic depiction of animal behaviour. In the 1994 movie, Rafiki discovers that Simba is still alive after the lion flops down on some plants, and the earth and leaves which scatter are magically carried by the wind all the way to the wise monkey's tree, where he reads the leaves in an empty tortoise shell. The new movie has a quite ingenious and perhaps more feasible method for Rafiki to discover the truth about Simba. This time a tuft of Simba's fur falls off and goes on a complex journey, floating on the wind, then a river, before being eaten with some leaves by a giraffe, and ending up in a ball of dung that a beetle rolls along. That ball falls down a hill and breaks apart, releasing the tuft of hair, which a leafcutter ant then collects and marches up the Tree of Life, where Rafiki spots it and recognises it as Simba's fur. It's a nice little updated sequence which also fits with the film's circle of life theme. In the first movie, there's a curious goof in the scene where Simba and Nala visit the elephant graveyard. I wonder if its brains are still in there. There's only one way to know. Come on, let's go check it out. The young lion cubs are ambushed by the hyenas, who emerge from the skull of a dead elephant. However, fans have commented that when you look more closely at the proportions of the skull, it's grotesquely large and far too big when compared to real-life elephant skulls. Which is why the 2019 movie skips over the hyenas coming out of the skulls and instead they meet Simba and Nala inside a cave. Another problem fixed from the animated Circle of Life sequence is Rafiki's seemingly impossible ascent to Pride Rock from the front. If you look at the shape of Pride Rock and how it juts out, it would be extremely difficult for Rafiki to climb up beneath it, and very silly too given he could access the rock via a much easier route instead. The new movie fixes this by showing Rafiki walking onto the top via a much more gently sloping rock face. As you can see, the new Lion King tends to tone down some of the animation's more exaggerated cartoony moments to better fit the photorealism of the new CG version. Uh, what is that it? That is not a lion, it's a furry bird! It looks like a lion! Yeah, that's not a lion. Let me get a closer look. So, the remake changes this moment, where Timon lifts Simba's paw up all the way above his head in an incredible feat of strength for a tiny little meerkat. Instead, the new movie has Timon identifying Simba as a lion by looking at his teeth. It's a lion! Run for your life! Wait, 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 Timon! Wait, 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 Timon, wait! It's, it's, just, it's a little lion! It gets bigger! Another scene made more realistic this time around is when Nala chases Pumba. In the original movie, the warthog rather foolishly tries to escape her by squeezing through a gap under a tree root that's too small for him. How bleak is that? Which is why it doesn't happen like that in the new story, and instead Pumba is cornered by Nala when he slips and falls trying to run up a moss-covered rock. Another small but important change which die-hard Lion King fans may have noticed is that after Scar is defeated and Simba walks out onto Pride Rock, in the remake, Zazu says, Your Majesty. It's a nice fix to the 1994 ending where Zazu says these words to Simba, although the actual audio ended up cut from the final film. If you watch the animated scene closely, you'll see Zazu mouth the words as Simba walks past, but the dialogue can't be heard. That mistake was introduced because the filmmakers thought a moment of silence would add more gravitas to the scene, however they didn't redo the animation to stop Zazu's mouth moving. Speaking of adding things to the film, the new movie also adds some new meta moments and Disney Easter eggs in the Timon and Pumba scenes, and I talk all about that in my Lion King comparison video. Tap the screen to watch that or click the link in the video description.
Now, did you spot any new plot holes or mistakes in the Lion King remake? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to enter the giveaway. Congratulations to the winner of my Spider-Man giveaway. Contact me via email for my about page so I can send you your prize. Tap left for my next Lion King video, or tap right for another Disney video or something else you're sure to like. And if you enjoyed this, a like and a share are always hugely appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!